Hey everybody, Josh from Silka here with a fun aerodynamics themed video for today. And we aren't exactly discussing this beautiful work of art I have here behind me, uh, but in some ways we are. So this we will cover in a future video. This is a 1981 Jatan Profil Aero uh, road racing bicycle. I've been looking for one of these for about five, six years. I actually found this one in Hungary uh, kind of over the Christmas break and was able to get it back to the States. This is really one of the first true attempts at an aero bicycle, 1981, uh, true aerodynamic tubing, uh, aircraft strut tubing, 20 millimeters wide, only 19 millimeter wide tires. Tires even have little wings that try to smooth the, uh, their shape to the unfortunately box section rim. Um, aero head tube, the first set screw seat binder that we know of uh, the first behind the fork brake mounting uh, that we know of. I mean, really a lot of innovative things going on. We will cover all that in a future video. But one thing on this bike that, uh, you know, I, I look at this bike and say, we had all this tech and we gave it away, right? This is 81 uh, at our wind tunnel test we just did. I also brought my 1991 Tour de France race, Le Mans TVT, significantly less aero than this bike. And you think one of these won five stages at the Tour de France in 1981 under Bernard Eno. And within a few years, we had completely gone away from aero, focused on weight, and the bikes get much slower, which we'll show you in that video. But the one thing here uh, that really stands out when we put this bike next to the TVT are the handlebars. 38 centimeter bars uh, on this bike, because we knew all the way back in 81 that that was faster, and we just threw that knowledge away. Uh, if you're like me, you grew up late 80s or mid, mid 80s into the 90s racing, you know, you had to have wider bars because chest, uh, you know, expansion and breathing, that's what we were told. If, you know, if your hands are too narrow, you, you can't breathe. And of course, with the modern aero bar era and narrower bars, we know that now completely pretty much to be not true. You can put out a lot of power with your arms narrow like that and that your diaphragm expansion is more, you know, I think up down than like wide. Anyway, one of these things we threw away, narrow bars. How much are they really worth? Well, they are coming back uh, with great popularity based on things happening in the pro peloton. And so we went to the wind tunnel. We had Dylan Johnson, Drew Dillman, and Ben Delaney from The Ride. Uh, link to his show below, The Ride on YouTube. It's an amazing channel. Please check it out. While you're down there, please uh, give us a like and a subscribe. That really means a lot to this channel. Uh, and also leave a comment or a question. Uh, these videos really come out of the comments and questions that you leave below. So thank you for helping us with that. Okay, so back to narrow bars. We had it, we gave it away, we're coming back to it. What's it really worth? Well, here's a, a little video and some pictures. Ben Delaney, he is a big guy. I didn't actually get his stats, but he's quite a bit taller and significantly more muscly than myself. He's on a large gravel bike uh, with 46 centimeter bars, you know, a lot of wide bars and gravel. And if you think about wide bars from a CDA perspective, you know, we've talked about that on this channel before. CD, your coefficient of drag, that's sort of how streamlined are the shape of the, or the shapes of the things. And then the A is the frontal area. So narrow bars are largely a play on reducing that A. And you see what happens, you know, as the bars get wider, you're arms and hands go from kind of being in front of your body to being out beside your body and the A is increasing. You know, now you have your torso and then your arms are their own area uh, when we're looking at the frontal area picture. If we can narrow the bars, you pull them in front of the body, that A is reduced. And then because things tend to draft each other in a line, you're also generally reducing the CD of those objects by kind of lining them up in a way. Um, that you'll see some knock-on effects in CD when you pull the arms in front of the body. Um, you know, you think of uh, what we see with like the British Hope team bikes, right, where they're pushing the fork legs out to let the wheels breathe, but also then to get the, the fork legs and the seat stays in line with the rider's legs so that everything is linear and you're kind of breaking, breaking the air and then everything behind that is in that draft of that turbulent wake. Um, little bit of a similar idea here with the arms. So what's it really worth? Well, this is pretty amazing. So 32 kilometers per hour, 20 miles per hour. So a, a good gravel speed, fast gravel speed. Um, you know, we see the top pros are in the 23, 24 mile per hour range. 
at some of these events like uh, you know the SBT gravel, but the the good age groupers are in the low twenties, um, and with you know a little bit of a headwind or whatever, that's a we're all going twenty at some point. For Ben to go from a forty six to a forty to fifteen watts of power at twenty miles per hour, that is significant. I've got my chart. I don't normally have things off screen here, but I've got my chart. Um, yeah, I mean Ben's made fifteen. That's crazy. 15 watts. If I look at that at 40k an hour, it's 30 watts at 40k an hour. That's unbelievable. And he's not even going narrow. He's just going from 46s to 42s. Now, we did not have a 37 uh, or 38 to put him on for this test, but in some other testing that we've done, I will tell you from 42 to 38, we're generally also in that seven to nine, maybe seven to 10 watt range um, at this 20 mile per hour speed. So you could kind of expect that again. What we did have though is Dylan Johnson, who's already on 37 centimeter bars and he came in, put down a really an impressive uh, CDA uh, drag number in the tunnel. You know, Dylan's a guy we've worked with for a number of years, done a lot of work on his position. He's coming in uh, already quite Quite streamlined. I mean, for for ballparks here, uh, Ben Ben and his baseline, and again, Ben's a bigger guy, but in his baseline on those wide bars, we're looking right around 186 watts to go 20 miles an hour. Aerodynamic watts to go 20 miles an hour. Uh, Dylan came into that same test. Uh, where is it? Dylan baseline normal 121. So he's he's going the same speed on about 60 watts lower. He's a smaller guy, but he's on a much more dialed setup uh, than we started Ben out on as well. So you know, just think about that, the importance of aero. Uh, he's already 60 watts lower on a baseline. Now, what do the narrow bars do? Dylan's on a 37. We had a 32 centimeter bar. Um, and actually he went up one watt. And we were a little confused at the time until we got the frontal view of this. and. The particular bar he had had a little bit of a, of a camber to the hoods this way, and it actually took him from more of a vertical upper arm position to more of what we would call like the chicken wing position. And so the hands got narrower, but the elbows actually came out with that particular bar because of that flare that, uh, in the geometry of the bar. And he actually got a lot worse. So. You know, you guys know, I love to say it depends. This is one of those, are narrow bars better? Well, it depends. If your elbows come out, uh, then they're not. But we did also have our hands. Thank you, Matt Giddings, uh, <laughs> local indie legend uh, track racer out of the UK and, uh, and, and great friend. Um, he brought some crazy track stuff that these track racers are riding. And he bought a, brought us a, and let me make sure I'm not getting this wrong, a 26 centimeter bar. This thing is bonkers when you look at it. Uh, yeah, here's Dylan. And uh, yeah, from Dylan's baseline on the 37 to the 26, he went seven watts faster still. So, and, and we focused on keeping the elbows in. This one actually has a shape that it managed to work. I don't know if it's just that the hands are so narrow um, or if it, again, is the geometry, but the elbows stayed in seven watts. So I just want everybody to think about that. The narrower bars are not going to cause you a breathing problem, uh, as I was told when I was a junior, but they probably are going to save you some significant watts, even at gravel speeds. Uh, again, 20 miles per hour, 15 watts saved for Ben. And had we been able to get him on the 37 centimeter bar, um, that probably would have been another seven to 10 watts. The other thing we see here, uh, and I'll say it again, uh, you know, Dylan's bars were all arrow um, topped, and I think we tried to keep all of Ben's bars round. But again, going to the arrow top on the bar can be a significant savings, even at these lower speeds. And then, of course, if you're going from round, which is a terrible shape, to arrow, that's a benefit. And then as the bar gets narrower, the bar has less frontal area as well. So all things to think about. Uh, if you need a new bar or you're building a new bike, I personally would go for the narrow one. And, you know, this isn't some crazy thing we just made up. We had it in 1981. We just forgot about it. And now we're rediscovering it. So uh, anyway, 
Let me know what questions, comments you guys have. Again, like and subscribe. We really appreciate your support on this channel, and uh, we love hearing from you. So until next time.